Okay, we have maybe a few more seconds to go until we start. Let's wait. Let's be precise. <laughs> Okay, hello everyone and welcome. Uh, we are Finnester and uh, today's topic is uh, how you can complete your composites with our fire protection coatings. My name is Ari Hokkanen, I'm the founder and the CTO of the company. My background is in composites. I've been doing composites till, since my childhood and I'm here with my colleague Trevor. Uh, good uh, afternoon everybody. And today, the topic really is the fire protection coatings. So a few words about Finester. We are SME backed by investors located in Lahti, one hour from Helsinki, quite nicely located. Uh, and our focus is uh, fire protection coatings for composites. We manufacture, we supply, and, and, and we deliver coatings. Everything is in a house technology based on innov innovative certification technology and more or less controlled intermittent technology. Ceramification is the technology where polymeric material will turn to ceramic material when exposed to fire, and intermittent is a property when the polymeric material starts to expand rapidly when exposed to fire. Also, we have fire retardant treatments for natural fibers. <clears throat> what do we see as a fire challenge in composite market? Well, Everybody in the audience knows that the composites are great materials. They are used as a last resort when other materials fail. And the benefits of the composites are that they are lightweight, they are very strong, and strength to light, uh, weight ratio is, is unbeatable. They have very nice, consistent quality. We can produce very nice, small series with consistent quality. And you can have a nice appearance, different colors. You can have different uh, uh, gloss levels, textures. You can use them outdoors, they, don't ne they never corrode, low maintenance required. And they can be processed in different shapes with inexpensive tools. But let's face it, they are oil-based and they burn. That's, a, that's the Achilles heel of the composites. Of course, there are fire retardant or fire, fire resistant composites in the market, but they are more or less done with adding some fillers into the resins, some additives to the resins, or even change the speciality resins. But they usually lead to compromises in the composite. And you will lose the properties why the composite was chosen in the first place. So suddenly they are heavy, not that strong. They are brittle, not consistent. You have limited colors available, gloss levels available. You really cannot use them outdoors because they absorb water and they cannot handle UV. They are high viscosity resins, high viscosity products. They, it's difficult to process. But yes, you will get some fire protection at, at some point. But you will lose that nice uh, properties of the composite where it was originally chosen from and that's uh, chosen for. And it's like, like using the same tea bag for five times. You are technically still drinking tea, but it's not very good tea. These are technically, they are composites, but they are not very good composites. So our solution is fire protective coatings, and they go under the great name of uh, Finester Red. So you keep your composite as it is. Don't change your composite. You just coat it or paint it with our fire protective red coatings. And there's no need to change your composite, just add that missing fire element by using our coatings. So how red works? Let's see a 15 second video.
Okay, let's watch that again. So again, this is a this is a standard composite at room temperature. This is a epoxy glass fiber composite without any additives, but it has two layer coating on top of it. So it has a base intermescent base layer, pure red layer, and then it has a top coat, hybridized top coat as a ceramifying layer on top. It's in blue color, and it has some water droplets for the creating the effect. And now what happens next is the Bunsen burner is introduced from the right side. It's a bit not too much visible, but it's still there. And the surface temperature starts to increase rapidly. Okay, maybe the, <laughs> the, it's not the best image of the pause, but uh, you can see under the play, <laughs> play mark there is a, maybe I cannot remove it, but uh, what happens next, the organic material burns away. So there's some organic material, that's the, hence the name, hybrid, inorganic, organic. So the organic material burns away, and that's completely okay. At the same time, let's, let's watch a bit more further like this. About this stage, so about 700 degrees, all the organic materials are gone and inorganics are left, and the ceramification process starts to begin, or it's already in process. At the same time, the heat will transfer to the other side of the ceramified coating to pure red layer, and that starts to expand. So that's our intermescent layer, bottom layer that starts to expand and creates this kind of ceramic bubble. Here we go again. Organic burns away, ceramic bubble is formed, and ceramification is complete. And this is now stable. You can burn it, you know, hours and hours in thousand degrees, and that's stable. And that stable bubble, that stable ceramic bubble, will isolate the heat from the composite itself. So the heat will never go to the composite. And that's why you can have that standard composite in your process. Maybe you watch it once more. It's a, a bit clumsy the user interface. Without the ceramic bubble on top, the intermescent would, would just keep expanding and expanding and eventually will fall on the floor and expose the original composite. But in this case, it's shield, closed in, in a ceramic shield bubble. Okay. So again, in a nutshell, Standard composite at room temperature, once and better introduced from the, to the surface, starts to increase the temperature rapidly, the organic materials burns away. This is completely okay. These are not incombustible systems, they are, these are fire protective systems. And then ceramification is, has happened, and everything, all the organics are gone. You can see this gray silvery area here, and that's a ceramic material, and then it stable, stabilizes after thousand degrees for and keeps their stable fire protection. Okay, so now Trevor will continue. Thank you, Abby. Um, I see from the chat that some people are having problems seeing the presentation, so apologies for that. Um, hopefully you can get in touch with us afterwards and we can share the presentation with you. Um, so, so why coatings? Why do we I think coatings are the answer for fire protection? Um, a, a great number of reasons. Uh, as you can see with the photos here, um, we have the choice of different colors, uh, gloss levels. Um, these coatings are very easy to apply. They're spray applied usually to get the best control of film weight and, and final appearance. You can build up the coating on, under a number of layers, but also um, you can also fix any defects to your composite substrate. So the bottom left photo in the uh, slide uh, you're seeing at the moment uh, shows some, some severe uh, wetting problems with the gel coat, and you can put coatings on that and uh, basically fix your problem. Um, so as we look at the coatings, uh, we have a number of benefits to uh, our, our technology. Um, as we mentioned before, yes, the poor composite surface is uh, a, a big benefit, repairing what is uh, not a, a perfect finish. 
Um, the flexibility of the production, um, uh, of course, with coatings, you can also um, take uh, an existing coating off and put another one on uh, in service. So uh, maintenance and the extending the life of materials that are already uh, out in the field, whether or out on an oil platform, for example. And really, um, our technology is uh, summarized by the all-in-one uh, phase. Uh, you're getting the colors, the surface effects, you're getting outdoor weathering, UV light resistance, and also wear and tear resistance, cap, scratch, anti graffiti, and giving us this confident and consistent fire protection uh, properties. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we prefer recommending a spray application, but you can also apply our uh, red technology with a brush or roller as well. Uh, another benefit is that uh, this technology will cure at room temperature. Um, so obviously, if you have big pieces, uh, if you're uh, manufacturing composite bridges in one piece, for example, or large panels that uh, don't fit into ovens, uh, then this technology uh, is ideal for that application because you can uh, allow it just to leave it and allow it to cure at room temperature. We found that uh, it's also quite compatible with uh, some composite processes. Uh, at the moment, filament winding is quite an interesting topic for us. Um, we have a commercial business where the coating is, has been incorporated into the existing filament winding uh, production process, uh, coating individual items. And also, we're finding that we can work with both thermosets and thermoplastics. Um, so uh, it's not a case of just uh, sticking to perhaps an epoxy glass fiber composite or polyester glass fiber. Uh, it's, it's very um, broad in its application, this technology. Um, unsurprisingly, uh, I think for most of you on this uh, webinar today would be the number of markets where you find composites is basically the number of markets where we think uh, our technology would um, lend uh, a benefit. Um, so certainly in the uh, transport, uh, the, the, the aerospace, the automotive, uh, traditional transport industries uh, for composite applications, um, and also in the new, if we like, new energy, so the battery casings and pressure vessels to, to power the vehicles of the future, um, but also in the construction industry. So very much uh, with building products, with commercial, uh, with the red technology uh, in certain construction applications, so building products, uh, railway vehicles, and also railway infrastructure, and for general in infrastructure applications. A uh, little bit of a case study here. So uh, one of the good examples of uh, how our product really has uh, helped uh, enable uh, a business is this marine case study. Uh, the company here is a company called Norsa Power. Um, they've uh, developed and uh, commercialized a, a new form of powering uh, commercial uh, shipping, um, this rotor sail technology, and this white funnel-like uh, um, structure that you can see in the photograph is a rotor sail, and that's been coated with our Finesta Red technology. Um, that obviously requires not just the fire resistance to meet the, um, uh, the standards, which in this case are the IMO 2010 FTP code uh, standards, part five and part two, but also it requires outdoor weather resistance, durability. This is out on the uh, oceans, out in the shipping, so very severe outdoor requirements. And our coating is able to um, provide uh, the protection needed uh, for that application. Uh, another um, application I mentioned earlier was the construction applications. Um, when you're looking at uh, different levels of performance in the construction world, we're often referring to EN 13501-1 as a standard. And I'm pleased to say that uh, in combination with, uh, in this case, so it's a polyester glass fiber composite materials, uh, we're able to achieve a um, class B, uh, S1D0 for the full classification, which is pretty much the best you can expect from composite materials. Um, for those of you who are aware of this uh, EN 13501 standard, um, the A1 and A2 classes are really for non-combustible materials, which uh, composites will not be able to, to meet in their own right. So we're pretty much top of the uh, level in terms of performance uh, for fire uh, in the uh, construction standard. And I should point out here, the total heat release that we achieved is a very good result, uh, less than 1.5, so well below the threshold required for that B classification. 
Also, we've done some work in the aerospace world. Um, so we've uh, managed to uh, develop a two-coat system, in this case for aircraft seats. And this two-coat system has passed uh, some quite stringent uh, 25853 standard tests, the flammability and the smoke tests, um, which are always uh, quite a challenge to meet. And with our two-coat system, we are able to, to meet that requirement. And as you can see from the picture, it's an aluminized uh, finish on this occasion. But uh, as we said earlier, any color is, is possible. That's all it's black. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, some, a little bit more about our capabilities. Um, so uh, we can't really do our work without having um, a degree of or access to fire testing. Uh, I'm pleased to say that uh, uh, Finesta took the, the step at the beginning of this year to invest in a new fire test laboratory. Um, a really important step for our business. Uh, it means we can do all the work in, in house now. We can do the development of the coatings. We can run the uh, test protocols and we can um, uh, see how our products are performing with different composites, seeing how their compatibility <coughs> is. And in the picture, this is actually what's called a cone calorimeter. So this is a, a key test in the far world, um, measuring uh, the um, uh, heat release or the heat emission from a, a composite uh, during um, a, a, a burn test up to 750 centigrade. So this is a really important piece of equipment and gives us a lot of detail, a lot of information on how our coatings are performing and protecting the composite underneath. And summarizing our capabilities in our fire test laboratory is this uh, little, I guess, uh, sort of a hexagon flower diagram. So the heat release I mentioned earlier, the 5660 is the standard there with the cone calorimetry. Um, but we also have uh, test uh, equipment available uh, that we use to determine time to ignition, the flame spread, checking out burning droplets. And also we have a um, test uh, rig to test and to look at thermal transfer. So effectively uh, seeing what's potential structural failure uh, when things are burning. Uh, we don't have the smoke and uh, toxicity test uh, equipment at the moment, but we hope to complete this, uh, this picture in the coming months. And then just a couple of uh, example slides of uh, what sort of information we get out of our equipment. So this is the thermal insulation testing uh, I mentioned a moment ago. And we think this is a pretty impressive result. We can keep uh, temperatures on the unexposed face of a three millimeter thick um, thermoplastic glass fiber um, panel uh, at around 200 centigrade, while the exterior is at 1000 centigrade uh, for a 30 minute period. So this really shows, if you think back to the video that uh, Harry showed earlier, that this um, thermal protection, this barrier protection is, is performing very well and it's stabilizing. It, it keeps a flat profile on these temperatures. It reaches a steady state and uh, we are protecting a lot of the heat from getting through to the composite and of course, therefore, protecting and preventing structural failure of the composite. Um, so the, the graph on the left is very interesting. Also the graph on the right, which is more to do with the uh, pressure vessel business. Uh, so thicker uh, epoxy carbon fiber um, panels and again, getting a stability there below 200 centigrade um, in terms of the performance of the system. And then one further graph we have is uh, what we're talking about consistency. Um, a, a big problem in the, particularly in the railway um, standards world, the EN 45545, is that you have a, a black and white threshold uh, number that you have to get below to, to, to get to a certain uh, classification. In this case, it's called a hazard level. And um, we're pleased to say that uh, with uh, coatings, you can really get very consistent results. You can get consistent uh, readings. You can see those three readings on the left there within uh, one or two units, uh, kilowatts per square meter. And so um, coatings basically brings in consistency. You're not reliant on how the composite's been produced. You're not reliant on the slightly difference in the composition or the manufacturing process. The coating fixes it and gives a consistent and reliable heat release result. So now I think I'll pass back to Ali to um, to complete our presentation. Yeah, let's 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 go through a bit. If if the red our red technology red coating is right for you. Well, short answer: we don't know. It's not that simple. But let's find it out. So of course we need to assess the viability of our technology, your, your process and your technology and your business. So meaning that the 
we, of course, we can have a two-way, uh, and we should have a two-way communication, but we, we can have a two-way NDA if required, then we can have the communication, we can have a call settings, and then we can have a commitment both ways. And then we can specify the technical issues. We can specify if it, what kind of fire tests are needed, needed to pass. Is there color requirements? What about gloss, textures? What's the substrate? The mechanical properties needed, adhesion, et cetera. Of course, there is a process also need to be integrated. How you do things today? Are you going to put it in continuous line? Are you going to do it on site? Is that what, is that, what are the curing times, nozzle sizes, whatever? And then the business opportunity behind, behind it, is this a new business? Is this something you're going to replace? Uh, a timeline to the, to, to the business and value proposition and, and, and you know it. So if, and when all these balloons are fully filled, then we have, can have the success in the middle and that's both very success. But what, it, what does it mean in practice? In practice, it means that let's discuss. Let's have that Teams meeting or Zoom meeting and let's discuss about your technical requirements. Let's discuss about this other process you want to integrate it to, and let's discuss about the business opportunity behind it. And if we see that this is in the decent level that we should continue working together, then then you can send us your sample of your material, and we will we will do the compatibility tests and, and burning tests here, and then we can see that that we have something that we can offer, and then we can analyze the results together and recommend next steps. And the last slide, just the conclusion. So there's no need for you to change your composite. It's that's just a normal standard without any FR composite that we are working with. And we will match our products to your application, your process, your business, because we can do that. This is not fixed, written in stone product. These are adjustable. Gearing times, viscosities, you name it. And of course, the full fire test and guidance and support from, from our in-house laboratory. And new applications are very welcome. Thermoplastics, natural fibers, bio-based products. Uh, uh, that's, that's all in our, our radar. So in a, in a nutshell, finished the red fire protection coatings, complete composites. OK, thank you for that. We have some seven minutes for the questions and answers. I guess we have plenty of those. Can you, Trevor? Yes, I can go through the questions with you, Ali. So the first question is, which thermoplastics um, could be uh, used uh, in combination with uh, red technology? Uh, we have quite extensive testing done with polyamides uh, and then uh, PLA. But we we don't recommend polyolefins, of course, so PPPE is out. And, and that's, that's without any surface treatment. But polyamide is, is working very nicely. And what else do we have? MMA. Uh, PMMA. PMMA, yeah. yeah. Second question here is how about delamination between the coating and the bulk material for mechanical applications? Is it possible to reduce the influence of the critical interface between them? Well, that comes down to the compatibility and adhesion that we need to, when we know the substrate, then we'll match our base code technology to get the best adhesion. So if it's epoxy based or is it polyester based, uh, what is your the substrate, then we'll match the, and that's why we need that sample to, to really test the adhesion before doing anything else. If there's no adhesion, there's no fire protection. What is the VSC of your coating? Very low. So these are not solvent free totally, but these are very high solid systems, two components solvent based, but, but the high solid system. So there's a 3% uh, of, of uh, solvent in, in the system. Uh, we can make it totally solvent free, but then it re requires a bit of the equipment. One further question here. Uh, can this product reduce the blistering effect on colored coating of carbon fiber? Uh, blistering effect. It, it doesn't blister. So it's, it, uh, I didn't maybe fully understand. No, I, I think it's to do with the adhesion and uh, how things happen with carbon fiber. So have we seen, we've, we've, we've worked with carbon fiber. Yeah. We've, we've got good results. Is this, or is it osmosis? Yeah. There's very, it has very good osmosis resistance, and uh, it, it, the red technology works beautifully. It's a high performance coating if you don't care about fire at all. So it's still a very nicely performing coating, but it has that added ceramification effect when the fire is involved. Uh, at which temperature is the intumescence activated? 
approximately 270. Okay. Has the coating created a foreign object debris when on fire, limiting your application in the aerospace sector? No, it doesn't create any foreign object during the fire. It ceramifies and, and keeps everything intact in the capsule. How does the coating beh behave under abrasive forces? It has very good abrasion resistance compared to polyurethanes. Polyurethanes are kind of soft. This is, these are hard but tough coatings. Uh, so the hybrid chemistry enables that combination from the organic in organic world. So these are hard but tough, but not, not elastic, but they, they, are, they are more or less tough. So it has nice, very nice uh, abrasion resistance. We can give you, of course, more details. We have done tests, but we can go them through separately if you contact later. Okay, we have a question on what is the price of one square meter coating, roughly? Roughly? <laughs> Depends on the application. Yeah, the film thicknesses, you know, two <laughs> or so many things. So it's difficult to give any numbers here, but uh, of course, please contact them and we, we see the application, we see the, how many layers do you need, what is the thickness, but it will be, in a total price, will be cheaper than you have your FR composite with all that labor, all that time, all that equipment, all that waste. If you do that with the standard composite, you just you know paint it afterwards. Even if the total cost is what matters here. Okay, and another question here: Is it compatible with other commercial paints? Uh, you mean uh, if you paint on top of this? Why would, you don't have to do that? Uh, it's compatible with everything if if you sand the surface, expose. Uh, the, the material, then you can paint it if, if you want, you can paint it, yes. But you should stand carefully. These are very hydrophobic systems that might create some issues if, if it's not properly sanded. Okay, here's a nice one for you, uh, Ave. Uh, do you know how behaves the intermessing char under vibrations? Can the char layer paint detach away the composite substrate when fired under vibrations? That's a very good question, and this is why we have designed this two-layer system. So if you have only intermittent layer, the char is more or less fluffy and, and, and light. So when you have vibration, it will fall, fall on the floor. With this system, we have a two, two separate layers. We have that ceramifying bubble that protects the, the, the intermittent foam underneath. So it, it's fully uh, uh, reliable under stresses and vibrations of and airflow. Okay. Uh, any experience with AST, ASTM E84 tests? Uh, do you remember? Um, I don't think we've done E84 yet. We've, mm. we've had some interests, but we've not done any specific. We've been, we've been following the European standards, so this is American standard, so not too much. How do you control the quality of products in production? We have ISO 9001, 14001, and of course, every patch is uh, controlled in, in the right manner. Do you have solution for SF6 gas protection on composite FRP tube? Do we? <laughs> no, I don't know. I think we, I think we could do with a, a bit more detail on understanding that one. This is not the yes or no question. It's not one that we've actually uh, come across that one. Now. Of course we have. <laughs> Please contact us. Okay, that's all the questions that I just check if I missed any. Gas permeability is... Uh, Oh, yes, so there's some questions on the um, weights. So typically, what aerial weight is applied on a composite panel? So what film thickness? Uh, uh, 400 plus 400 grams, grams per square meter is the standard to, to begin. If, if you get very nice protections with 400 plus 400, 800 grams per square meter, which is approximately 600 microns upon film thickness, total film thickness. But sometimes just a single coat application will yeah. do the job as well. So sometimes just a 250 micron, 200 micron of the depending on that, yeah. yeah, depending on the you know what kind of elements do you need if you need that. If you need only that uh, flame spread time to ignition, one one layer is enough. Burn droplets, one layer is enough. But then if I go to heat release and structural failure, you need two layers. Um, maybe a final question: How to repair in case of chipping of coatings? It's fully repairable. I mean, in any coating, there will be damage. There will be vandalism. There will be, you know, some hits with the hammer. So it, these are not indestructible coatings. Of course, you need to repair them in case of damage. And you can repair just the sand it, you know, mask it, and, and spray a new layer on it. And it will cure at room temperature. So it's repairable. 
that's it. I think we are running out of time. We still have half a minute, so we can wish everybody a very nice end of the week and uh, enjoy the rest of the uh, event. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thank uh, you. Bye-bye.